that's hot. Does anybody like their coffee really hot, but almost to the point where you can just barely drink it? <laughs> well, that's me. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. It feels like a long time since I've uh, had a tea or a coffee while doing these videos, so I was kind of in the mood for one, thought I'll just go for it, even though it's probably going to be cold by the time I finish, but anyway. So this video is going to be all about this filter, or these type of filters. Um, you might notice this isn't actually a Cine Bloom, Cine Soft Pro Mist filter, um, because I'm actually using it on the camera. This is my uh, polarizer, but just imagine that actually... I'll just take it off the camera, hopefully without moving the shot. So this filter right here, can you notice any difference? You probably can't really notice much of a difference, but anyway, these filters, um, this is a Cine Soft filter, but they come under different names. The Pro Mist is obviously quite popular, Cine Bloom I believe is one. It's essentially a glow filter. I'm going to put that back on quite happy that I managed to do that without moving the camera at all. So there has been quite a bit of hype with these filters over the past I would say couple of years with both photographers and filmmakers using them. I've been using that filter that I just showed you for at least a year now and I just wanted to run through a few things, show you some photos, go over some of the goods and the bads and hopefully this can help you if you're thinking of getting one of them filters or if you already have one, um, just a few things to keep in mind when you're using it. And I think at least some of these points will be helpful to you. I'll get another little sup of my coffee in just before we start. Just before we get into this one, by the way, I literally just posted a poll um, on the community tab just before I started this, um, asking you guys whether or not you think we should start up a print store for um, some of our photos that you may have seen over the past couple of years. I recently just sold the first print I've ever sold, somebody just requested a certain photo and yeah it was kind of a cool experience, it's cool to do, personalise things a little bit and that was just the first one. I, I would have a lot more things I would like to include in it, in the package when you buy a print, um, just to add some nice little touches to it. Um, so yeah, if you would be interested in maybe buying a print or it's something you think we should do, um, head over to the poll, I will link it, I don't even know if you can link it or not, um, it's on our community tab and just drop a little vote and be honest um if you wouldn't buy a print then let us know um we just want to sort of see if, if it's something you guys might be interested in it's maybe worth our while looking into but yeah the idea of it is um kind of exciting and i like the idea of just rolling through that whole process or at least some of it anyway so yeah your opinions would be much appreciated okay so let's start with the good points about these filters because i don't really want to start the video on a negative note um i suppose then i have to end it on a negative note but what can you do okay so this photo right here i believe is one of the first times where i used one of these filters when going out to take some photos it was at the beach it was kind of a gloomy day and i thought i'll shoot some black and white and just as i was making my way down onto the beach this house that was um, behind me got some serious backlighting and it was extremely bright the sun was just sort of setting and it was dipping down through the clouds as i lined up the photo and looked through the viewfinder I wasn't totally sure a lot of it looked overexposed as it would because the sky was literally totally white but uh, I took a few photos and this is the one I ended up with and this is an example I think anyway of when these filters can really have a cool effect on your photos. I just ended up with this really dreamy glow behind the house which to be fair was how it looked when I was looking at it with my eye it, there was really backlit and there was a big glare coming past the house which was cool. And I think the filter enhanced that and made it look even softer. Um, and I think it worked really well with the black and white. So I'm quite happy with that one. Got quite a cool result, I think. Anyway, some people might think it's a little bit too much. I use a quarter strength um, Cine Soft filter from Tide Optics. And yeah, I really like how this one turned out. I don't, I don't think it's too much for this particular scene. I, I think it worked nicely. So here's another photo, this time at the beach again, but in totally different conditions. This was like maybe an hour or so before sunset during the summer. Um, really nice day, had some nice tones. So in this photo, the sun was obviously to the left-hand side. 
and I kind of kept it just out of frame but there was like a huge glare and it was kind of a little bit hazy too which looked kind of nice and normally these photos aren't something I always go for um, like that almost backlit sort of look but from where I was at the viewpoint was cool and I thought I'll grab a few photos anyway and I think again in this one the Cinesoft filter just helps give that natural glow and just adds a dreamy look to the scene and I'm pretty happy with this one too. It creates that look that people almost try to recreate in Lightroom with radial filters and stuff and have a glow at one side. Well, the Cinesoft filter helps you do that in camera. Here is another example, this time in the mountains. Again, it was kind of a gloomy day, so I was taking some of these photos in black and white. Kind of a different scene this time. We don't really have much direct sunlight. There was a little bit of a glow behind the mountains and using the filter, I think it just gives the whole photo a bit more of a dreamy soft look which I like especially in black and white and on cloudy days like this it just adds a softness to the photo but it's not over exaggerated if you know what I mean obviously being really overcast the light was pretty soft but I think the filter adds just a nice bit of a glow sort of around the edge to the top of the mountains and also the stone that's directly on the front was getting quite soft light and I think the filter just adds a very subtle little bit of a glow to it and also on the grass in the foreground especially in black and white it just gives it a really soft look even though it was out of focus it like blooms stuff a little bit if you know what i mean which is exactly the purpose of these type of filters and here is another example during our trip to portugal um a few months ago we were at the beach and this was pretty much midday i think this was like 12 or maybe one o'clock in the day um, super kind of harsh lighting but I wanted to take some shots of the waves hitting off the rocks because it was pretty dramatic looking and the waves were quite big. This again is a totally different scene so you get to see how the filter sort of affects things during midday real harsh lighting and the thing I like about this photo and how the filter affects it is the water. Um, obviously when you get waves that big the water is pretty much almost white and the sun was just shining directly on it and I think the filter gives the water a nice glow to it and also when it's hitting the stones there's a bit of spray coming off and I think the filter emphasizes that spray and makes it look even more dramatic which I just really like and it also just softens things again with this type of shot which I think works pretty well when you're photographing waves and stuff like that. So another thing that's really nice about these filters is if you're a film photographer and you're trying to match your digital work to your film or if you're just someone who likes the look of film photos and you want to edit your own photos to look somewhat similar um, the filters give you that softness which helps when you're editing to give a more filmic filmic to give to give the look of film a little more and it's something that's quite hard to replicate in editing if you're not using one of these filters so just to show you the effects of these in a portrait um, here's a portrait I took of Christina again on the beach as you may know I'm not really even a fan of taking photos on the beach it just happened that I, I have took a lot of photos with this filter on the beach um, as you can see she was backlit and again the filter just does a really nice job of blooming the highlights behind her. It wasn't super harsh but the sun was behind her sort of in between the clouds and it just does a nice job of blooming those highlights around her but not too harshly. It just gives the background a nice soft look and just a dreamy glow. It's kind of hard, hard to describe it in any other way than it gives a nice dreamy look especially if you're backlit and taking portraits and here's another portrait just to show you another example again on the beach um no idea why but on the beach again clearly backlit again in this one and again the filter does the same thing gives a very nice dreamy look backlit that nice glow uh really like how this one turned out at night time the effect of these filters is just enhanced tenfold um, window lights, car lights, street lights, they just give off an extreme glow which can give a very cinematic look to both your photos and your video. I don't have too many night photos, I just haven't been out and about taking night photos with the filters, but you can see the effects in a couple of these video clips as well of just what it does to car lights and stuff. Just a really nice cinematic look. So the last of the good points, the filters help protect your lens. Um, I know some of them aren't the cheapest, there's a few of them, especially the Pro Mist filters that are quite expensive for what they are, but they're not as expensive as a new lens, or at least most lenses, um, unless you've got a bargain or two. 
Um, so they'll help protect your lens in rain and stuff or sometimes even if you drop it the filter will take the brunt of the impact and help protect the glass on your lens which is a little bonus um, benefit from having one of these on your camera. That was a lot of talking. My coffee's probably cold. That's one thing I hate when you go to a coffee shop. You order your coffee or your tea or any hot drink. Sit down, especially in the winter, to take a little sip and it's just mildly warm. Pretty disappointing. Okay, so here come the negatives. So again, I'm just going to run through a few photos and try to explain to you where I thought the problems were. So here is a photo I took while we were on our trip to Portugal in Faro town at night time and I tried to take a photo down this cute little street and through the viewfinder to me the filter was adding a nice bloom to all of the lights, the window lights, the street lamp. Uh, I thought it looked really cool um, so I took a few and then I decided to take the filter off because on the last one I took I just thought this might be a little bit too overpowering and I'm not sure so I took the filter off, took another one and while I was flicking through the photos and picking which ones to edit that's where I realized um, that this could be a problem at times because the photo where I used the Cinesoft filter is just blooming the highlights way too much particularly in the lamp which is kind of one of the main subjects in this photo obviously I'm taking the photo down the street but the lamp just right there at the corner to me anyway was one of the things that I knew would draw attention as you looked at the photo and the filter in this one just bloomed the highlights too much in that lamp to the point where it took all of the detail away um, if you compare it to the other one you can see the details of the lamp and the light still looks good it's still bright and has a glow to it but the detail is still there um, and that is the problem at night time when you get something as bright as that lamp especially when everything else is so dark um, yeah it took a lot of the detail away and it's something that I will definitely be wary of from now on um, especially at night time because yeah it's a little bit too much for me and that's me using the quarter strength filler like I said there is an eighth and a half I think and god knows what that would have done to the lamp you you might not even have been able to make out what it was with that much bloom going on um but yeah not a fan of just how much it affected that lamp and I think it looks better without it okay so here is another photo another black and white one at the harbor this time I was doing a little POV you may have seen the video wandering around taking some photos and there was this little boathouse and the sun was behind it as you can see in the photo it was very bright I had the Cinesoft filter on again took a few photos um, these were more examples for myself and for the video to sort of show you the effect you can get um, and this is where another one of the problems comes in I don't know how to explain this any other way than over blooming um, obviously it was really bright behind this boathouse but in this picture it's just way too far for me um, the, the blooming effect on the sun behind the boathouse comes over the top of the boathouse way too much that it becomes distracting I think anyway if you compare this for example to the portraits I took of Christina on the beach which are both backlit um, and, and also the other one of the mountains where it's slightly backlit the effect on those is just much more subtle and I prefer the look but on this one with the same filter it's just it's just way too much not something I would really want on too many of my photos if any of them for that matter just a little bit too intense or probably way too intense you could imagine if this over blooming effect that I'm calling it happened and um, when when I was taking the photos of Christina for example or if you were taking portraits of someone and that blooms over the whole side of their face and um, it's just gonna ruin the photo yeah definitely something you need to be wary of because you might be going for that dreamy look and instead just end up sort of ruining a few photos and that just kind of rolls into the next point which is it can be a fine line at times um, I wasn't intentionally trying to make that last photo of the boathouse look that extreme and um, it just can be kind of hard to tell through the viewfinder sometimes because a lot of the times when you're shooting backlit you are overexposing the background um, and just hoping that the glow will look nice but because it's overexposed and you might have zebras and stuff in your viewfinder you can't exactly see at the time how much effect that is having obviously you could look back through all the photos and sort of tone it down a little bit 
but um, if you're shooting quickly you might not do that or you might not have time to do that so yeah it can be a fine line because the first one that i showed you on the beach i really like that result and it probably is over blooming a bit but i like that one whereas this one i don't so yeah a little bit of a fine line okay so this next point is not backed up by any technical data or anything um it's just something that i think might happen that i've sort of picked up on a few times i've been out both filming and taking pictures with a cine soft filter on and just to keep this simple and hopefully it makes some sense i think when you have these filters on the camera doesn't read that you're overexposing as well as it would without the filters okay so i'll try to explain when i'm out taking photos and doing video for that matter um i feel like i can overexpose a lot more when i have these filters on than when they're off so okay so let's just say i'm taking a photo of something and it's maybe backlit like a few of those examples that i showed you i feel like i can increase my exposure a lot more on the camera before the zebras come in when the filter is on compared to when it's off now i'll have to actually try this at the time i haven't done that yet took the filter off and see if the zebras come in or not but i feel like it allows me to overexpose more and um, before the camera realizes that it's overexposing and the zebras and stuff come in it's getting confusing even trying to explain this um i almost feel like the filter makes the camera give a reading of the exposure that's a little lower than what it actually is so the zebras come in a bit later than they should i could be wrong but i feel like i've overexposed parts of photos and in video clips as well using these filters whereas without them i didn't um i don't know something to be wary of i've done it more with it than without it so just be careful with that because you might end up overexposing a lot of photos and video clips that you didn't intend to that's a confusing one though and just to finish this off i think there's only one other thing that i've really came across and this relates more to when you're using these filters with a fuji camera so if you've had a fuji camera for any period of time you've probably um read a lot of blog posts and forums and stuff about the sharpening issue particularly with lightroom and stuff there's a bit of an issue where um foliage and stuff can be too soft i've definitely run into it and mentioned it in videos before um taking pictures in a forest for example or landscape photos where there's a lot of grass and stuff going on it can just look really soft and it's hard to get it sharpened up um i think a lot of it's to do with lightroom but nevertheless you end up with photos that in certain areas can be shot can be softer than you would want them to be and if you're using one of these filters as well then it's gonna soften things even more if you want that grass or foliage or whatever it is to be sharp um might not be the best idea to use one of these filters because with fujis it's probably already going to be soft and you're just going to make it even softer um i can kind of get away with it because i don't really take too many photos like that and i'm not really a traditional landscape photographer but again if you're a fuji user definitely something to be wary of okay i'm definitely gonna stop blabbering that felt like a lot um didn't really intend for it to be that long but i was just saying what i had made a note of and hopefully it's helpful in some way or other lately when i've been going out to take photos i have sometimes been taking the filler off um and i do like the result and certain times i like it on it just depends i don't think it's something you should just keep on the camera at all times because it sometimes it just doesn't help enhance the photo it just softens parts that probably would look better if they weren't as soft it does work really nicely for video too but a lot of those same things um apply yeah just be wary of it don't just have it on at all times but anyway hopefully this was helpful in some way or other um if it was maybe give the video a thumbs up consider subscribing if you want to see more and uh make sure to vote in our poll too if you're interested in maybe getting a print or you think we should set up a print store but yeah cheers for watching and as we always say Take it easy. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, I didn't get finishing my coffee and it's definitely way too cold now.